Welcome to our last video about antihypertensive medications. In this video, we're going to discuss sodium nitroprusside and phenaldopam. So let's get started. Sodium nitroprusside is a short acting vasodilator. So it has an immediate onset and its effect can last up to 10 minutes. So if you want to give it, you should give it in a continuous intravenous infusion. It acts both on the arterioles and the venules. It causes both arteriolar and venular dilatation. By dilating the venules, it causes a decrease in the preload. And by dilating the arterioles, it will decrease the afterload. Even though its effect on the venules is somehow more pronounced than effect on the arterioles. This is similar to nitroglycerin, which we use for angina pectoris. This is the structure of sodium nitroprusside. And the most important point we have to notice here is the sodium nitroprusside has five molecules of cyanide. So inside the body, sodium nitroprusside dissolves and releases the cyanide. The cyanide can accumulate and cause cyanide poisoning with prolonged use of sodium nitroprusside. The mechanism of action of sodium nitroprusside is similar to that of nitroglycerin. Sodium nitroprusside is a prodrug that becomes converted inside the body into nitric oxide. What happens is sodium nitroprusside combines with hemoglobin and forms methemoglobin, and then it cleaves cyanide and nitric oxide. Any nitrogenous compound or any compound that contains nitrogen in it will result in methemoglobinemia because it combines with hemoglobin, it converts the first iron into ferric iron and will result in methemoglobinemia. And that's why the excessive use of sodium nitroprusside will result in methemoglobinemia. Also, the excessive use of sodium nitroprusside will result in the increased production of cyanide and cyanide poisoning. Nitric oxide is a lipophilic molecule that diffuses into the inside of the smooth muscle cells. Inside the smooth muscle cells, it will stimulate the enzyme guanyl cyclase. The guanyl cyclase converts GTP or guanosine triphosphate into cyclic GMP or cyclic guanosine monophosphate. The increased intracellular levels of cyclic GMP will stimulate protein phosphatases. These phosphatases dephosphorylates micellite chains. The dephosphorylation of micellite chains decreases the interaction between actin and mycin, and this eventually leads to smooth muscle relaxation. There is a class of medications that acts on the phosphodiesterase 5 enzyme called phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors like sildenafil that's used in erectile dysfunction. The net result of these medications is similar to sodium nitroprusside because eventually they will increase the intracellular levels of cyclic GMP through the inhibition of the phosphodiesterase 5 enzyme that breaks down cyclic GMP into GMP. That's why you should not combine sodium nitroprusside with these medications because this will aggravate the effect of sodium nitroprusside. The uses of sodium nitroprusside includes continuous intravenous infusion because the effect, remember, only lasts a few minutes. So you use it in continuous intravenous infusion for acute hypertensive crisis. Also, you can use it for congestive heart failure because it decreases the preload and it decreases the afterload, so this helps to improve the function of the heart. Other uses of sodium nitroprusside includes aortic stenosis because in aortic stenosis, decreasing the preload and also decreasing the afterload will help decrease the work of the heart. Also, you can use it in esophageal viruses, pulmonary hypertension, and also to induce hypotension in some surgical procedures to reduce the bleeding. The major and the most serious adverse effect of sodium nitroprusside is cyanide poisoning. Remember, the compound of sodium nitroprusside has five molecules of cyanide in it. With the prolonged use of sodium nitroprusside, this will result in the accumulation of these cyanide molecules and cyanide poisoning. Also, sodium nitroprusside can result in methemoglobinemia. Remember, any compound with nitro in its structure will result in the conversion of the ferrous iron of hemoglobin into ferric iron. The hemoglobin with the ferric iron state is called methemoglobin. Other side effects of sodium nitroprusside includes hypotension, 
palpitations, headache, and flushing. Some contraindications to the use of sodium nitroprusside includes compensatory hypertension, like in the case of coarctation of the aorta. In these patients, we do not really need to induce hypotension. Their hypertension is necessary for their survival. Also, sodium nitroprusside is contraindicated in the cases of low cerebral perfusion. Also, with B12 deficiency or anemia, and this is because this increases the risk of cyanide poisoning, as we're going to discuss later. Also, sodium nitroprusside is contraindicated in the cases of acute congestive heart failure, in cases of reduced total peripheral resistance, because this can result in shock. Also, sodium nitroprusside is not recommended during pregnancy. And finally, we should not really use sodium nitroprusside in patients with severe renal or hepatic disease. Here is a quick overview about cyanide poisoning. Cyanide is a highly toxic compound because it inhibits the cytochrome C oxidase of the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. And this will result in the reduction of the production of ATP for energy. Tissues with high metabolic demands like the heart and the central nervous system are particularly affected. This will result in manifestations like seizures, hypotension, cardiac arrest. In order to diagnose cyanide poisoning, we need to measure the blood cyanide level and also the blood lactate level. Why the blood lactate level? Because if you inhibit the electron transport chain, you will increase the production or will increase the anaerobic glycolysis which is the glycolysis without oxygen. Anaerobic glycolysis will increase the production of lactate. So in cases of cyanide poisoning, the blood lactate level will increase as well as the blood cyanide level. So what do we do in the case of cyanide poisoning? The first thing to do is to discontinue the drug, obviously, because this is the offending agent. And then you give nitrites, sodium thiosulfate and hydroxycobalamin. Why you give nitrites? Remember we said nitrites oxidizes the ferrous iron into ferric iron and this will result in the production of methemoglobin. Why do I need to form methemoglobin in the case of cyanide poisoning? Because methemoglobin binds avidly to cyanide and this will free up the cytochrome C oxidase. Okay. The next thing also to give at the same time, the sodium thiosulfate, because sodium thiosulfate binds to cyanide to form a harmless thiocyanate. So why don't you just give sodium thiosulfate without giving nitrites and forming methemoglobin? Because this is a slow reaction, it will take some time. So you need to give nitrites as well. Also hydroxycobalamin is a form of vitamin B12 that binds to cyanide to form harmless compound called cyanocobalamin. Finally, I'm just going to mention quickly the drug phenoldopam. Phenoldopam is a selective D1 or dopamine 1 receptor partial agonist. You can remember that the name of phenoldopam, there is DOPA in it. That's make you remember that phenoldopam works on dopamine receptor D1, which is dopamine receptor 1, and it's a partial agonist. In that case, phenoldopam decreases the afterload or the blood pressure. Phenoldopam is used intravenously for hypertensive crisis most especially in patients with concomitant chronic kidney disease as it improves the renal perfusion. And this is a unique function of phenoldopam. So if you are encountered with a patient with high blood pressure or hypertensive crisis and he has a concomitant chronic kidney disease, the drug that most likely to be used is phenoldopam. In contrast to dopamine, though, it does not have effect on the beta adrenergic receptors, which is something favorable. One last caution is that phenoldopam raises the intraocular pressure. So use caution in patients with glaucoma. This is the end of the video and also the end of the antihypertensive series of videos. Thank you everyone for watching and your support. Please, if you're not subscribed yet to our channel, please do now and also like our video and share it. 
And also, please check our Facebook group, Medical Borditis. There is a lot of exciting stuff there. Thank you again, everyone, and see you next time.